Episode two of Nine Day Fiance the Other Way opens up with Johan and Danielle in Dominican Republic driving on the way to his family's house. As we covered in our last episode, Danielle is 42 years old from New York City and Johan is 32 years old from Dominican Republic. In the last episode, Danielle told Johan that she wants to stay in Dominican Republic for longer than a year. And let's just say our dude didn't take the news well because that wasn't their original agreement. From the inception of their relationship, Johan has made it painfully obvious to Danielle that he dreams of moving to America so that he can make a higher wage there than he makes in Dominican Republic. Johan, much like Five Old Dreams of making it to the United States, the land of opportunity, but he doesn't realize how expensive it is to live in New York City. There's a reason why people say if you make it there, you make it anywhere. It's incredibly hard to make it, period, let alone in one of the most expensive cities in the United States. The newlyweds greet Johan's big family. It's all smiles. His entire family really loves Danielle because she's his meal ticket to America. Johan tells the audience that he lives with his parents, his two sisters, his brother, and he has 10 nephews. It's a total of 16 people living in this one house. Johan explains to the audience that he's really upset with his wife right now because they agreed to stay in Dominican Republic for only one year while he awaits his visa to be approved to then come to the United States. It's funny Johan should say this because Danielle has actually admitted to the audience that she hasn't even begun his paperwork for the visa process. I mean, if I don't apply for a visa, he can't go anywhere. So like, I could just hold on to his marriage certificate and never apply for a visa. Majority of the audience doesn't like Danielle because she's a very manipulative woman and we can see that by how she is lying to her partner, her husband. She's already made her money living in America. She's at a completely different place in her life than Johan is. But you can tell that she's not a high value woman by how she breaks her word to her partner. When you are a high value person, you honor your word and the promises that you make to yourself and your partner in a relationship setting. She's not there yet. This is my thing too with self-proclaimed spiritual people. There's a difference between talking about these concepts and embodying them. Mi sueño es irme a los Estados Unidos a vivir con Daniel y mi familia también tiene ese sueño. Man's on a mission to get to the United States confirmed. He wasn't even trying to hide the fact that it was also his family's dream for him to be in the United States so that he could earn a higher wage. Usually we only stay at Johan's house for a night or two because it's a lot of people. It's hot, there's no air conditioning, and after like 24 hours, I start to get mean, and no one wants to be around me when I'm mean, so. This is so relatable, half my family's Italian, and whenever I go and try to stay with them, they don't believe in the AC because they think that it makes you sick. So I do the same thing where like, I'll stay with them for a couple of days, but then I check into a hotel because I like the AC to be on 69 degrees, blowing directly in my face, especially when I'm sleeping. I don't wanna just dog on Danielle either, I'm gonna give her props because she's handling staying at his family's house without the AC really well, at least way better than Big Ed when he stayed with Rose's family in the Philippines. Before we continue reviewing this trash TV show, I'd like to tell you about today's video sponsor, Bright Sellers. Bright Sellers is a wine delivery service and my new favorite company. After you go on their website and take a 27 question quiz, they match you with wines from all over the world. And the best part is they send the wines directly to you so you don't have to actually get in your car and drive to the liquor store and use Google while at the same time looking at all of the labels and getting overwhelmed. If you're a homebody like me that's not super experienced when it comes to which wine is good, which wine is bad, this is the perfect company for you. Each box comes with a wine education card for each bottle that outlines the tasting notes, suggested pairings, best serving temps, and where the wine is originally from. The concierge team is also available to answer any of your questions that you have on the website. The concierge team is incredibly easy to work with. A feature I really like about the website is that you can find the answers to questions that customers have already had. As you're ordering from this company, you're rating your wines and your experience, so the boxes, the wines that you get is gonna get better and better as time goes on. When I unboxed my shipment right away, I was impressed by the careful packaging. The first wine I tried was Life in the Woods, a rosé from France, and I picked this because I saw Rosé and I thought of that moment that Cody Co made fun of that couple that was like, we went to Whole Foods and you got Rosé and I got celery. Anyways, right off the bat, tried the Rosé and it was delicious. Then I tried the rest of the wines and they were equally scrum de I'm just thinking out loud here, this is a perfect date night idea. This saves you the trip to Napa Valley and it's more cost efficient and you don't have to leave your house. Let's put it this way, Socks, the wine that this company sends is so good that I'm a hairy dude turning into a wine mom. If y'all are interested in getting started with Bright Sellers, click the link in the bio of this video and get a $50 credit towards your first four bottle box. Big thanks again to Bright Sellers for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to our future program. ¿Qué tú quieres hacer esta semana? Ir a la playa. ¿A la playa cada día? Sí. Es mi vida perfecto. Sí, es porque yo quiero vivir aquí. Moving to the United States was clearly one of the reasons why Johan even went through with this marriage with Danielle. She was fully aware of that. They were on the show Love in Paradise before they were on the show, and she communicated to him and made a promise to him that they would be in Dominican Republic for one year. She would start his paperwork. Once he got his visa, they would move to the United States. So for her to go back on her promise to him because it's more convenient for her and she wants to stay in Dominican Republic after they got married and she already knows that she has him on lock, that's incredibly manipulative. No, I'm not going to be here. Pero vamos a Nueva York. Tú no vas a Nueva York ahora 
Eh, Ahora no, pero no diga siempre. You know what's funny too about the show? I feel like a lot of older women go and enter these relationships with these younger guys that live in other parts of the world. And they almost have this invisible armor to where it's like, no matter what happens to me and no matter how shitty I treat these dudes or no matter how many promises I break to them, I'm always gonna rely on the fact that I'm American and this show favors the American cast members and like the majority of the audience is also American. So people are gonna have my back no matter what. And I think that that's a pussy ass way to act. The more I sit on it, the more manipulative it becomes especially because she's also 10 years older than him she is more established for her to enter this relationship with him and be like hey I want you to make your life all about me and be devoted to me this is a man that also thinks about his family and has that love and loyalty to his family and wants to provide and do better for them as well I understand the argument that you want to create a family together and you should also prioritize your wife and your relationship I think that Johan is trying his best to do so but I do believe that Danielle entered this relationship for for the wrong reasons as well. Something else I find annoying about Danielle is that she acts like the only place that they can live in the United States is New York. They can live in like just about every other city in the United States. They don't have to reside in New York City. Danielle's also in for a culture shock when the tourist vibes wear off and she's forced to live a normal life in Dominican Republic. Poor Johan, so sad. Dude was trying to pull a Pedro but picked the wrong American woman. Si estamos bien aquí, no hay necesidad de ir a tu país a trabajar. Sí. Y si no, no va bien aquí. Vamos a tener que ir a tu país. Johan actually decides to be the bigger person and agrees to Danielle's demands to stay in Dominican Republic for longer than a year because he doesn't want to create waves in their relationship. We're only one episode deep into their lore and it's obvious that Danielle feels because she makes more money than Johan does that she doesn't have to keep her word to him and her say has more weight in this relationship because of that. Funny for me to watch someone like this with such low vibrations constantly talk about spirituality. You'll figure it out one day, kid. The next NPC we meet is Nicole. She's 38 years old from LA. Damn, Nicole crushing the game with the fur coat and the 70s pajama pants with the pink and the white shoes. A lot's going on right now. Nicole works two jobs. The first one is she delivers food. Hi. Hi. Here's your pizza. Thank you. You're welcome. Good night. Bye. Her second job is she resells clothes, usually vintage clothes from flea markets. Nicole is from a small mountain town in Idaho called Council. She graduated high school with 22 other people, so I'm assuming it was one of those towns where everyone knew everyone's business. Nicole admits that she's always been a free spirit and she's wanted more out of life than her small town could give. After about a decade of traveling around. I finally settled in LA. I think it's really cool that Nicole can sew and make her own clothes. That's a really slept on skill. I was max level in tailoring and it made me a lot of gold in World Warcraft. She informs the audience that she lived in several different states and was really trying to find herself. She eventually settled in Los Angeles where she went to fashion school. However, she worked on fashion jobs and she didn't really like it. She feels like she didn't have the right personality for it. So I started studying meditation and spirituality. And then three years ago, I was on a spiritual singles website. Wait, what the ass? Is there a dating site for spiritual people? What does that look like? Hey babe, I'm intending that we grab dinner. So what's your rising and moon sign? Are you a Palatopus eighth house? <laughs> Anyways, Nicole embarks on a spiritual journey to Egypt. Nicole says, we were going all these spiritual sites doing these pretty deep meditations. Yeah, that sounds pretty deep actually. Nicole says to the audience that her trip to Egypt was magical. The last day of her trip, she walked into a fabric store where she locked eyes with this beautiful boy with rippling muscles and he seemed really sexy and into her. They started up a conversation. His name's Mahoud. He's 26 years old from Cairo, Egypt. I have an idea for his IG handle. It should be your dude Mahoud. <sighs> clean. Mahoud and Nicole started talking. He asked her if she liked Egypt. She said, I love Egypt. I want to stay here. I think it's amazing. He said, oh, you should stay here and be my wife. The Riz. I can tell right away that Nicole has crazy eyes. She's getting caught up in the romance of the situation. She wants to live and stay in Egypt as a white woman that doesn't speak the language. She doesn't realize how dangerous that is. Nicole and our dude Mahoud, they exchanged social medias. They went on a couple dates and then she went back to the United States. I thought about just staying there, but I didn't. I was like, no, you gotta go home. <laughs> Be wise here. <laughs> Five days passed of her being home in the United States. He asked her to marry him and she said yes. How could you be so goddamn stupid? I was on a plane back to Egypt um, to marry him and be with him forever. Oh shit is right y'all, they actually got married. So they went to the courthouse and then they had an after party. You have to be a certain level of mentally insane to be on the show in the first place, but I underestimated her power in the words of Anakin Skywalker. I didn't think that she would actually marry this dude so quickly. She goes on to tell the audience that she's so insanely love with the dude that she just married in Egypt that she didn't tell her friends and family. That's not why, like don't blame it on you being so insanely in love with someone. You didn't want to tell them because it's embarrassing and you didn't want to get called a dumbass 
directly to your face. You don't know his work history. You don't know his criminal history. This is so irresponsible. Hey mom and dad, I went on a spiritual quest to find myself in Egypt, but I ended up finding a husband. I feel like as a woman, you have to look out for yourself, especially in this day and age. I see new sex trafficking news every day and it makes me genuinely concerned for everyone. So when I see girls like this making these decisions, like. Y'all are just lucky that the camera crew is there because shit could really go down. Nicole meets up with her friends at the flea market. She's telling them about her plans to move to Egypt to be with her true love, but she's nervous about how they're gonna take the news. I'm glad I got to see you guys before I go to Egypt. What? You're going what? I'm Where? <laughs> I'm going to live with Mahmoud in Egypt. But I thought you're... <clears throat> Separating. Nicole then informs the audience about something very interesting, and that's that this is actually her second trip to go live with her husband in Egypt. This is my second time moving to Egypt. Yeah. I guess the first time she moved to Egypt to be with him, she was so overwhelmed because she didn't realize how different the culture was. She admits she really struggled with the culture shock because she's not allowed to drive over there. And also, she doesn't speak the language, which, duh. After about two months of this girl living in Egypt, she decided that it would be better for her to start the application process to get a spousal visa for him so that he could eventually come to America. Since she didn't like living in Egypt, she thought it would be better for their relationship if she just frequently visited Egypt. I guess she went on about six trips to Egypt, but she admits that their relationship fell apart because they ended up fighting all the time. We were married for about 11 months when I told Mahmoud that I wanted a divorce. I canceled Mahmoud's visa application and I blocked him. The people on this show are so jokes. Damn, Nicole wrote our dude Mahoud in her death note. She really blocked this man and broke up with him because they kept fighting all the time. My question is, why is she going over there now to build a life with this dude in Egypt when she already knows that it didn't work out last time? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Well, let's look on the bright side. She's on the right show for insanity. Welcome to the 90 Day Fiance franchise. So how did you get back together? Because we, we haven't yeah, even just, heard just anything about, about that. Didn't I didn't realize I didn't tell you. The reason why it's difficult for this girl to let go of this attachment is the meaning that she's placing on this relationship. Not to mention mistakes were made because she's already married this man after only knowing him for a couple of days in real life. You have to remember that letting go is a choice and I don't care how much you love someone in the moment, love shouldn't hurt you. It should actually stimulate your growth and development. Like when you love somebody and they love you back in the truest sense, you should be a team and make each other better. I hope that Nicole and the rest of the creatures develop a sense of awareness and realize that you spend the most time with yourself. And if someone isn't willing to come into your world and look at you like the only man or woman in existence, Existence, then you should be perfectly content being alone until you find your soulmate. Nicole's friends back up what we already assumed about Nicole, and that's that this girl's a wild card. She's the kind of friend where you cannot talk to her for a week, and she's all of a sudden married to a guy in Egypt. It was just, he only wanted to be married to somebody who lives up to his standards of like who a wife should be. And so he set forth in changing everything about me, and that I said yes. A bunch of things I shouldn't have. Yikers, Nicole's a people pleaser confirmed. She obviously hasn't done the internal work and figured out where that stems from. Usually the best way to go about this is if you're someone that constantly changes things about yourself in order to please the person that you're in a relationship with, you have to validate where that comes from. And usually it's out of the fear of abandonment. For Nicole, when I'm giving this advice, I genuinely want you to chase your most authentic self and not make yourself smaller in order to live up to someone's version of you that they have in their head. He wants me to cover my body. And without thinking, I said, okay, okay. And then he wanted me to cover my hair, and I said, okay. No uh, hugs from men, no. Not even your own dad? My dad, that's fine. Yeah, your cousins? Dad. No, oh no, no, not the cousins. cousins? No, no, no cousins. Yeah. Uh, what about his family? Nicole goes on to explain that she's not allowed to hug her cousins because in their culture, they marry their cousins, which was news to me. I didn't realize that they were on their Targaryen grind over there in Egypt. I guess this is why they call TLC the learning channel. When you have two people from different cultures, it should be a melting pot of cultures and you should make an attempt to meet each other halfway. Changing the way she dresses is a huge sacrifice for Nicole because she has a background in fashion. She's someone that really likes to express herself through outfits. So dur not the greatest idea to start a relationship with a conservative man in Egypt. We FaceTime him right now, oh, right? What would he say? He got a beer. Would he freak he out? Yes, yes, he dress. would. Yes. Did your friends <laughs> drinking with you oh, in public? So this is bad, right? Yeah. yeah. Nicole's like that cancer friend we all have where we take time out of our busy lives to give them fire advice about how to not get back together with their Scorpio ex and they still do it anyway. And we're like, wow, I would really like my five hours of that heart to heart session back. We still need to see how Nicole and her Egyptian husband interact. But before that, let's take a look at Danielle and Johan. Danielle woke up on the right side of the bed today because Johan made the compromise with her that they can stay in Dominican Republic for longer than a year. We also learned that Johan is actually 6'7", not 6'5", which makes him more attractive and more desired. I'm actually surprised that no girl in 
Dominican Republic locked us down. While I'm on the topic too, something to remember about Johan is that he worked as a personal trainer and dance instructor at a luxury hotel in Dominican Republic. There's a lot of foreign women that would love to swoop up a guy like this. This man has multiple options, not to mention from the boost he's gonna get from the show on social media, he's gonna have a lot of women that would love to put him on scholarship sliding into his DMs. So for Danielle, you should probably keep the promises that you made to this man. A few months after Danielle and Johan got married, he opened up a butcher shop. Right now they're walking to the butcher shop and Danielle admits to the audience that she's very excited to give her man business advice because she's opened up businesses in the past. On some troll shit, someone drew a penis right by Johan's butcher shop. Danielle walks into the butcher shop and her smile is soon replaced by a frown because Johan's nephew is behind the counter, all the meat is on the table, there's flies swarming the meat and she is not impressed by the way it smells or the way it looks. Todo el carne afuera. Sí. Para no? que la gente vea la carne. Danielle and Johan come from a completely different world. She doesn't understand that in the Caribbean, this is how meat markets are. In butcher shops in the United States and many other places, meat is refrigerated in order to not rot. Also flies touch poop and lay eggs, so I understand why she's grossed out right now. Yo, the nephew's got that fly swatter and he's just spreading bacteria from one piece of meat to another. Look on the bright side though, y'all, if there's maggots on the meat, it's just more protein gain season, baby. In my country, no, 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 not in tu país. Right away, Danielle has a snippy tone and she's coming from a place of this is not how this business is run in my country. And for Johan, this dude seems like he has no experience running his own business, let alone a butcher shop. Johan also seems wildly insecure when it comes to finances. To be fair, dude has a chip on his shoulder and you can tell by how he's not open to listening to Danielle's advice. Johan then says to the audience that Danielle's look of disgust, he wasn't expecting that. He thought that she would say, my love, I'm proud of your accomplishment and she would support him. I get that actually, I feel for Johan. I think that Danielle being a more experienced, more established, businesswoman who is 10 years older than him could have definitely came into this with a softer approach. Especially as a self-proclaimed spiritual person, a member of the Aoife faith, you would think that she would come from the place of the teacher and the healer, not necessarily the nagger. Okay. I'm gonna touch it. La carne está fría. If we have a little empathy and put ourselves in Johan's shoes, it's incredibly difficult to be with a partner that constantly makes you feel like you're not doing well enough financially. Johan is really upset by my reaction, but I'm not sure that he knows how to manage a business. This man is literally from one of the poorest neighborhoods in Dominican Republic. He worked at a hotel for a number of years. He doesn't have much experience running his own business. He's trying his best. Johan seems like he's putting a lot of financial pressure on himself because he wants to make enough money for his family, himself, and also Danielle. I can't believe that this is how everybody buys meat, like even rich people. Meanwhile, Danielle seems like someone that doesn't have strong family values and has communicated to Johan multiple times that she wants him to spend more money on her. I'm willing to bet that this dude hasn't had a lot of business mentors in his life, so Danielle, please, by all means, help him. Tu tiene un receipt? Un papel? Okay, sí. donde está? Danielle then takes it upon herself to do something really nice for Johan. She finds out where his books are and starts doing his business accounting. She does walk out of the butcher shop though because she can't stand the smell and then she says to the audience, I wanted him to make more money by starting this business and not lose the money and spend all the money he made in the hotel on this business. How's he gonna pay for food and apartment? How are we gonna have a baby? I think she made the baby comment for dramatic effect because it was confirmed in Love and Paradise, the show they were on before this show, that it's highly unlikely this girl gets pregnant. I think her financial worries for him are completely valid, however, I do want her to take personal accountability because it wasn't a wise decision to advise him to start a business that he knows nothing about. This man was a personal trainer, so like, duh, why wouldn't you open up a gym? Or maybe not even have a physical space. Use the following that you're going to get from the show to do Pilates or some kind of online course. I'm an idea guy. The NPCs need to do a better job of listening to me. This man is a genetic marvel. Why wouldn't you just sell an online class, especially because you're going to be up a couple hundred thousand followers on IG. Touching back to Nicole and her Egyptian husband, we finally see them interact and he actually blames her for starting the majority of their arguments. Yeah, I know you love to fight. <laughs> You're Mr. Jokester today. No, my love, this is the truth. You don't want to start a fight. You don't start any fights? Sometimes, but not much as you do. <laughs> <laughs> what a good idea this is, Nicole. Why are you chasing this relationship with someone that makes you feel like you're too much or you're constantly in the wrong? Is this the love that you feel you deserve, Nicole? Is it? Right away, Nicole, from the brief exchange that I just watched you both have, I can tell that he's not emotionally mature enough to fulfill the desire that you want. But hey, I guess that's what you get for seeking exterior validation, isn't it? Nicole goes on to say that her and her man argue about everything. It's like he wants her to live on a planet where there's only women. She adds that their biggest argument is over what kind of clothes she can wear while in Egypt. I always ask you to cover your body because you can cover your body, but you're making like this so tight, can't show like your body so 
No. I understand what he means. He doesn't want you dressing like Kim K, like that Skims brand. Something I don't like right away about this relationship dynamic is that you're sacrificing something right off the bat, Nicole, and it's something near and dear to your heart, and that's expressing yourself through your outfits. Yet he doesn't have to sacrifice anything. My question for you is that does it feel good to be a doormat and not command any respect in a relationship setting and constantly just like take it? You should set healthy boundaries for yourself or at least make proposals for him to change things about himself as well. For example, not making you feel like you're constantly too much or you're the reason why you have arguments. That could be a compromise right there. But if you don't speak up and stand up for yourself, how are you gonna command respect? But that's enough about them. Let's go back to talking about Danielle and Johan because they have an explosive argument about the business and they are the most entertaining couple from the second episode. I'm gonna put all of March in here. En computadora. Sí. Yo no tengo computadora. Tú necesitas. I agree, Danielle, but that's another expense, and you can tell from Johan's face that he's very stressed out about money right now. Anyways, Danielle runs the numbers in her laptop, people who bought, and she realizes that Johan's business is losing money at a rapid pace. Danielle accuses Johan of not being able to do simple math, and she's frustrated with him because he doesn't explain properly where the money's coming from. But to be fair, she's speaking in English and Spanish, so at times I think he's genuinely confused. Danielle then says to the audience that Johan is running this business like she would run a lemonade stand as a kid. ¿Cuántos? Dice. 19. Okay. ¿Y tú pagar eso? ¿Cuántos? 60. 60 es más o menos de 19. Es más. So, ¿cómo está? Es un negocio. Time out, Danielle. Instead of saying something like, how is this a business and looking at your man like he's stupid, how about coming from a place of compassion and saying something like, I don't know off the top of my head, hey baby, there are too many expenses going on right now. Let's find a way to decrease expenses and increase profit margins together. That's a healthier way of communicating. You don't need to like talk down to him or take the wind out of his sails. It's extra funny to me that like you run this yoga wellness business, yet you can't even communicate to your partner in a healthy way. Namaste, Danielle. You didn't marry Johan because he's a financial guru. You married him because you're physically attracted to him, which sounds like a you problem, honestly. I'm actually proud of Johan for how he responded to this. He asked her for suggestions in Spanish and she got hot and bothered and started screaming at him in English. I have a question. I'm asking no, no, where is my, my idea is where is the money coming from? It's my question. Where did you get the money? Danielle, the businesswoman, might be under a lot of financial pressure because I saw that she recently filed for bankruptcy in 2022. Starcasm reports that Danielle initially filed for Chapter 13 bankruptcy, voluntary repayment bankruptcy, but later changed it to Chapter 7 liquidation bankruptcy. At the time of her filing, the 90 Day Fiance star had liabilities adding up to over $200,000. Danielle listed her rent was $3,475 a month, not far off from the $4,000 a month she told Johan she pays. This could also very well explain why Danielle is so insistent about leaving behind America and moving to Dominican Republic, she could be running away from her debt. Let me know what y'all think about this couple and all the couples we covered in this video in the comments below. If you want one-on-one -on -one time, please order a cameo for me. I'm the number one cameo creator in the entire world and I'm incredibly chatty. Super thankful for y'all watching my videos. Comment below, subscribe, live your friend, live your friend, follow me on Twitch and on Instagram right now.